Let me start with Jabari Perry. He says, um, I've been watching your lectures. What are the symbols mean when the two obvious eyes are closed? Um, I don't know which symbol you're referring to when you say, what are the symbols mean when the two obvious eyes are closed? Is that from a scroll? Is that, where, where is that um, symbol? If you have it, if you can, you know, share it or give me the reference. But obviously, um, I can answer the question based on what I'm picking up. Um, when the two eyes are closed, it's really signifying that your third eye is open because these two physical eyes are not your real eyes. Your third eye is, is the real eye, right? So once these are closed, it means you have no need for them because you have another superior eye that is able to still see. Um, because like m most people have eyes, or shall I say everyone has eyes, but not everybody can see. And you have people who don't have these physical eyes, but yet they can see. You know, one of the, one of the things that we have to recognize is that you're a pure energy being. As an, as an energy being, you have receptors or you're able to pick up things by way of vibrations, you know. So if you didn't have eyes, if you didn't have, you know, any of the senses, which are all really one, you know, I've explained um, and I will explain again that you have what they call eyes, your two eyes, your nose, your two ears and one mouth. And although you are told these are five senses in terms of, you know, you, you, you taste things, but something has to touch your taste buds or your tongue for your taste buds for you to actually taste. So that's dealing with touch. When you hear something, that's really um, sound waves touching your eardrum so that you can hear. Um, it's the same when you, when you see something, light is touching, you know, your retina um, for you to see. And when you smell, again, you know, you're picking up particles that are touching your nose. So really, all of those are actually one sense, which is touch or perception or something that gives you awareness. So if you really think about it in that manner, if you only had one of them, you still have the ability to receive by way of touch. Um, you have other senses, which are your higher senses, referred to as telepathy, the ability to communicate mind to mind without any wires or any devices. You have intuition, again, the ability to pick up things, you just know things innately. Um, you have clairvoyance, of course, which is the ability to see interdimensionally, um, you know, and you can, you can literally pick up, this is clairvoyance, is clear vision um, from, from French. Um, and then psychometry. Psychometry is the ability to pick up by touching things, you know. The best example I can give you is when, if you ever watch like um, a detective movie and they're trying to solve a crime or a riddle, and let's say there was a crime committed and they were able to find something from the scene of the crime, like a cloth or something, people with the ability for psychometry are able to touch that cloth and pick up things and they're able to even put an artist impression together based on information received to put, you know, some kind of picture together where the, you know, the detectives can then circulate that image and then they're able to find the perpetrator. All right, so that's your um, answer, Jabari Perry. Um, the phone number to call in live, if you have a question you would like to ask live, um, if you put plus four four, that's the UK um, code, and then your the rest of these numbers, seven five three double nine six 
3882. I'll repeat, plus 44753-9963882. You can call, use your WhatsApp number um, to call. All right, cool. Remember, any, any support you can give us, any donations, helps us to do what we do and to support the many other things that we do, you know, to keep, to keep things going. So it doesn't matter how small, um, you know, we will, uh, we'll appreciate, love it. All right, so thanks for those that are tuned in. Please share the links. Um, we try to answer those questions first because, you know, if someone's showing us that love, it's only fair that, you know, we, we, we share that love back. Um, you can subscribe to OSM Vision, of course, because this is what we do. And we'd love to do this every single day, 24 hours a day, 365 days in a year, if we can. And we will only be able to do that with your support. Um, okay, so... Let's see what the next question is. I definitely have a question once you all are open for questions. Oh, we're, we're open for questions. Um, grace and peace, love. Okay, so um, there's another call coming in, but the first caller, if you would just like to say your name, where you're calling from, and ask your question, please. Uh, uh, my name is Joseph. I'm calling from uh, Detroit, Michigan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I, I watched the show last week. I actually called last week too. Thanks for taking my call. No um, problem. But I forgot to ask you uh, when, it, when it comes to the mixed race of people. Mm -hmm. Hello. I'm hearing what, you. Go ahead. What is it when it? What is it when it comes to mixed race of people? I know we talked about um, before. You know uh, the the black so called black man um, having uh, you know that that. Um, guy energy but what is it when it comes to uh, when you mix up those two races okay which two races black and white all right so what, what what would you like to know what happens okay let me just answer the question i mean it's very bold when you say what happens when it comes to them um basically the weaker gene will inherit from the stronger genes and um, when you mix, is it a matter of if there's offspring, then obviously the offspring is still going to be, for the lack of better word, black, because, you know, we don't really use the word black, but I get just for, for the people listening, um, the, per, the, be, the being that comes out of the offspring is going to be still the dominant. Um, but it's a bit broad when you say what happens, but the, the, the white will take away from the black. However, it's deeper than that. It's not just about the skin of your color or the color of your skin, sorry. Um, it's about the energies that are being transferred and, you know, that can go into, like, the, you know, the DNA and the spirits and, you know. But, yeah, if you, you'll have to be a little bit more specific if you want to know what, when you say what happens. Okay, we got, is it the same caller or got... Uh, we've got another caller, so um, go ahead. Please say your name, where you're calling from. Can you... Hi, so can, my name is Kevin, and I'm calling from Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, you're a bit choppy, but I heard you're, you're calling from Atlanta, Georgia. Yes, yes. So I just want to ask you a question, but I don't want to sound ignorant. Sure, go ahead. Okay, so I know how you speak about the evolution of man and how we evolved into what we are now. My question, without sounding stupid or what have you, is how come... Sorry, sis, your, your, your line is very, is very choppy. I, I, can, I can't really hear you, but... Oh, no. Oh, gosh. Okay, okay. Is this better? Is this any better? No. Is that better? Try again. Oh, man. Now better? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so, so my question is, you know, we speak about the evolution of man, man and how we evolved into what we are now. Mm-hmm. 
how come, like I said, without sounding ignorant, how come there's still, you know, like fish in the ocean and there are still apes that haven't evolved into us, if okay. that makes sense? Yes, it makes sense. And please don't feel like your question is ignorant at all because you'll be surprised that when you ask a question, it's, it's a question that might be on a lot of people's minds anyway. Right, so what we're saying is that before there were humanoids on the planet, they were in the waters. So the, the, the genetic material that we evolved from first was in the waters and it was transported here by way of the Vulcan beings, um, which most people know today as the dolphins. Now, after that happened, and we evolved and came onto land, there were other species and many species that, that are, are just like not evoluting from the same genes or genetics as, as the humanoids or as we did. And with anything else, different mixtures will continue to produce, you know, different hybrids or different types of life forms. So, um, the reason we evolved is because we had those genetic materials from our ancestors. But the waters had other life forms here before we um, evolved, you see. So it it's depends on what we're talking about because different extraterrestrials and different beings from different galaxies also um, came here and, and evolved. So it's not like there was only one strand and then we came onto land and that's it and everybody else is from the same strand there were different different strands i hope that's answered that question for you how come the apes are still not evolving that's a, a question from god gal the apes are still evolving everything is evolving um it depends on how long certain evolutions take. But everything, the one thing that is constant is change. Um, and it depends which apes, because there are different species of apes as well. Um, and people will tell you that some of the apes are quite, quite intelligent. They're putting them through all kinds of tests and, you know, to see how they have evolved in terms of their intelligence. Okay, um, any link of Wu Sabat with Southern African civilization spirituality based on teachings of Baba Krida Mutwa of South Africa and Joshua Monpongo of Zimbabwe? Right, yeah, so, I mean, a lot of the Af African brothers and sisters, especially those who have maintained their culture, um, like, for example, the Dogon tribe, which, you know, ties into what you're asking in terms of Krida Mutwa, which was tied into like um, the beings from Cyrus, um, Sirius, and um, you know, they, they were basically mapping things from the constellations, um, Cyrus A, B, C, way before the, the, the West had apparatus to, to basically know about this. So yeah, we're tied into those ancestors. Okay. Um, Got another call. Go ahead. Could you say your name and um, where you're from and, and, and ask a question, please? Dre and London. And um, question Run is, yeah. what is the purpose of all of these ancient, um, not just pyramids, but like stone structures? And why, why was they built? And what, what's the purpose of them? Okay. Yeah, the, the, the great... Um, pyramids, for example, in Giza. So when you look at the planet, the planet has um, what most people would know as ley lines. These are like energy grids on the planet. And some of the structures were placed on these ley lines for the extra, some of the extraterrestrials, crafts and beings would use them as, as a landmark or even like somewhere to charge their craft because some of the crafts use what we call blast electricity or they use energy that is um, emitting from the pyramids you know because the pyramids were emitting something called tachyon energy 
um, which came out as standard columnar waves, which look a bit like the DNA strand. So there were different structures for different reasons. Some of the structures were for schools where people would go to learn because different extraterrestrials um, that come from um, different fleets, they, they have different schools of thought and they came here and they were settling, settling um, in different parts of the planet and they were teaching people who were basically students um, and that made the grade. Also, when the planet had some accidents where they were dis that certain parts were destroyed, the elders would build certain structures to balance out the planet and keep it, you know, in a particular vibration and so forth. So it depends on which structure. Um, and, and so, for example, when too much um, in the Western world, they were building too many buildings, like, for example, if you look at New York or look at America, where they were building a lot of skyscrapers, there was a lot of weight on one side of the planet. And that causes a problem because when you're dealing with the vibration on the planet or the vibration of any object, um, it can cause problems um, if it's out of balance. So this is why um, the newer buildings or new structures had to use lighter materials. So you see a lot of buildings, newer buildings started to use like glass, fiberglass, etc., which is still durable enough, but not as weighty. So I hope that's answered that question. Um, somebody here, Ladell's channel, he says, say something new. Well, this is based on, 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 on a Q&A or questions that I'm asked. So if somebody asks a question that um, we haven't spoken about before or something new, then of course we will answer it. But um, I'm, not here to, I'm, not, I'm not here to just preach um, or give my opinion. So something new comes from the questions are asked that, you know. But the thing is, what's interesting about that is that what is new to one person might be old to somebody else. And so if somebody has not heard the answer for a particular question before, that will be new to them. Remember, we are worldwide. Okay, let me go on to Joshua's question. Are eight ether beings capable of reaching to nine ether beings? Simple answer is yes, they are. Um, and again, with ethers, it depends on if we're talking about hair texture or if we're talking about, you know, actual, like, your genetic makeup. Um, so if you've got eight ether hair, you know, it's not going to become nine ether hair. However, um, in, and when you're talking about ethers, we have to remember that there are different frequencies or vibration of ethers. And depending on which form we're talking about, in a physical form, obviously the Nagaru or Nagaranadu or the Negroid race would be nine ether. The um, Dravadu or Dravidian or the Asian are the ones that are going to be the eight or seven ether. But when you shed your physical body, you're still vibrating on, you know, on ether, but ultimately um, you're connected all the way if you can return back in terms of your soul, um, if you have a soul. Because if you have, a, you can be a nine ether being, as in your physical composition, but may lose your soul or not in tune. So you, as a nine ether being, will not reach nine ether on the higher um, vibration. So you would have to come back and then, you know, build up that, that energy to be able to transcend higher and higher. This is the purpose of you coming back is to learn and for lack of a better word, um, pass the grade to move on to the, the higher levels of ether. Yeah, and then eventually you go back to what we call pa pa ut, or um, the all expanding, which is like where everyone that makes the grade returns to. But again, if you think of a um, if you think of a spiral, so from the middle will be the most potent, and then you have rings around and outside coming out. So the outer realms are the lower vibrations. So even when you make it you go to the outer realms. 
and you still have to work your way through to go to the um, to the center of the inner realms. Okay, um, Ikoye, Rahubat family, my questions: Why do we reincarnate? Does the agreeable and disagreeable beings also reincarnate? Who were the true Anunnaki? How to disconstruct from your fear of hell? Um, quite a few questions there. Everything is vibrating on on this realm. You're going to have the because in the three dimensional world is where you need to basically get past this situation that we're calling. Um, agreeable and disagreeable because as you transcend to the higher realms you're not really subjected to the things of the, the third dimension so um, as a physical being we have 360 degrees made up of 180 degrees of disagreeable and 180 degrees of what we would term agreeable so this is like the polarity you need both sides to have balance it's energy, so you have the plus sign and the, the minus sign. Like in a battery, you'll have the what they call the negative and the positive. And so what you're doing is learning to master one side, which is really you should be mastering the disagreeable side of you so that when you go on to the next level, you're one or the other. So when you if you're disagreeable here and you master disagreeableness and become full 360 agreeable, then in the next realm, you are 360 agreeable, you see? So here, you're composed of the both sides. But when you leave this and go to the next level up, you are one or the other, right? So that's why it's important to master this side so that when you move up, you're agreeable. And over there, you just have beings that are agreeable and beings that are disagreeable. But you also have the opportunity again, because it's like you can then conquer your, your counterpart, right? Because remember, everyone teaches you that it's about becoming one, becoming one with, let's say, source or pa pa ut. So to become one is the 360 then has to do the same thing and become a 720 degree pure, what you would term agreeable. All right, which is a pure ethereal being or pure energy being. Um, what was the other part of the question? I'm going to try and get through this as much as I can. And I have a mod who will also be trying to answer your question in the chat. Um, okay, what was the last part? You reincarnate because you haven't mastered the, the realms, the lower realms, so you can graduate, for lack of a better word, then move up. Um, who were the true Anunnaki? The word Anunnaki is known by different cultures by different names. So one of the names is Anak, the An Anakim, the Nephilims, the Anunnaki. Um, and it's just a description from whichever culture. So the Sumerians will say Anunnaki. But, you know, you have the Anutu. You have many, many names, which is a description of these beings. All right. Um, and it's a family that came here, um, and then you had the, the main two sons, like Enki and then Lil, they split up and they went in, you know, they had a, a position to each other, but they also had offspring. But you have the other parts of the family as well, like uh, Rishkigal, Nagal, um, uh, many, many names, um, Nana, etc., etc. Um, how do you disconstruct from your fear of hell? It depends on what you see as hell, because hell is a place in ancient times which was dealing with the, the underworld, right? Um, the underworld or some of the caverns where these disagreeable beings or certain beings that some people refer to as being hideous and disagreeable, and they were doing certain things there that one would consider to be hell. And it was called oh hell. So the, the, the word hello is just the word, the O, oh, being put on the other side. But hell is also a state of mind or your environment. So you have to, you create hell for yourself based on, you know, your vibration and what you do and what you think. All right. Um, what's the next question? Respect and blessings to you, God. 
Likewise to you, goddess Grace, um, what's the history of the Nagaru people? That is such a big story, and, and this is why we encourage people. Um, I mentioned at the beginning that we sent out a newsletter to everyone that is subscribing on our, on our website. The links are in the chat. Um, attending classes regularly and reading the scrolls. Remember that all the information that you're hearing me um, give you is from the one and only Dr. Malachi Z. Yophana Bab Yanun, the master teacher. And um, the story of the Nagaru basically is before the stars, before the moon, before the planet, before what you call time. Um, and so depending on how far back we're going, one of the most um, relevant parts of our story is talking about when um, our ancestors came down here from, you know, what people call the Orion and the Sirius star constellations. But we really have no birth date because when you're dealing with ether, energy is not able to be destroyed. Um, and we go back to 76 trillion years ago. And even you, giving you the... Um, Giving you a number is just so you can see j just how long and how far away our story goes. But we were in air pockets as Ethereans or Ether. And um, so, yeah, we, we really, when you say what is our story, it's a big and long story. Uh, okay, I'm just trying to catch up. All right, next question. Again, any, any donations you give us, we appreciate love for that. Um, what do you think about polygamy and relationships? Remember this, Wusabat is a culture, it's a way of life, and it's a complete way of life. That means it governs everything we do as a people, and that will include anything to do with relationships, etc. So... Um, a lot of people mistake poly polygamy for polygamy, right? Because poly people think polygamy is one man having more than one woman. Um, the thing about that question, again, it all depends on the person and the situation because most men are the one, well, it's not, generally it's most men that would say, you know, what about having more than one woman? In our culture, there are strict rules pertaining to how you get with people in general. And um, in terms of, you know, what's the purpose, what's the reason? Because there are situations where that is something that would work for that family. You know, so, for example, um, if, you know, the, the, the original wife or first um, mate wanted help and needed help or couldn't have children or something and they agreed and de uh, decided to bring on somebody else. Um, it's a very strict thing. It's not like in Islam or any other cultures where they say um, you can just, you know, have four wives and as many concubines and as, as you can have. That's not our culture. Um, the same with, you know, even in the, um, in the world today, a lot of people sneak around and they call it creeping. Um, and there are so many problems with not having it in a situation where everyone is aware of what's happening and the first wife has a big say in terms of if you want to bring on another wife. But um, it's something that we do practice in our culture and... Um, there are strict rules as to how that would happen. Uh, most men can't have even deal with one person, let alone multiple partners, because it, you have to be able to support all of them equally in every sense of the word, not just physically, financially, emotionally, etc. But of course, um, there's, there's a shortage in terms of ratio of men to women. And... Um, in order for the future, our future progeny and, you know, generations, you know, because if, let's just give you a little example. If there were 10 men and there were only, um, let me say, 100 women, either 10 men will have 10 women 
and the rest of them, the 90, will go without. Or what will end up happening is what happens in the society where people will lie, cheat, um, creep around. And it's a thing where it's dealing with a higher level of, 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 of an elevation. So you're not just dealing with it from a, a sexual aspect, meaning that most people don't look at the union of why. Is it for sexual reproduction? Do you have businesses and you need people to help? Um, you know, there are many reasons, but ultimately it is about what are the reasons, does it make sense? And each family will be involved, all right? So um, it's a very broad question. What do I think about polygamy? It's not about what I think. We have, um, we have scrolls that govern everything in our culture, such as um, the Lotus of Life by Parna Babyanun, and that goes into relationships. We have soulmates, Partaruk, that goes into um, relationships. We, we have many scrolls, the unclean issue, that goes into relationships. Um, but just search on our website for the different scrolls and ask in class for more information. We reincarnate because we have not completed our purpose. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, my, my brother's answering. Um, Tawu Takzama. Okay, so what's the next question? Greetings, seconds. Hope you, hope you see this one. I wanted to ask what actually this is from Ateng Mogotsi, if I'm pronouncing your name properly. What actually causes the, our earth to rotate on its axis? Does, does just rotate on its own or is there, is there something causing it to rotate? Um, something is causing it to rotate because when you start to break everything down into like the smallest particles of atoms, you find out that you have, you know, electrons and protons that are rotating around the atoms. And that's exactly the same thing that happens with our solar system. And each one has something called um, a mutation rate. So... A mutation rate, it's like when you have a top and you spin it on a table, you see how it, it's wobbling but it's rotating? If you imagine that, and then it's actually rotating also around the sun. Um, and everything has that ability in terms of rotation but, um, and mutation, but there are different mutational rates on the different bodies, and that's what keeps things within their different um, frequency or vibration. Yeah, so um, it was, and it's set in motion based on the magnetic pull of the mass. So you have to look at how, say, a solar system is formed. Um, a solar system is formed by, let's say, a, a dying sun. Um, and when that happens, because when, when bodies are small, they expand and they expand and they expand and sometimes they explode because when you look at a sun, it's really hydrogen and helium that is burning and converting and when that energy source runs out, it will explode and then the fragments that explode from that sun will be thrown to a distance and then the mass will have a magnetic pull on it and then when they remain in, in the, um, the location where they've been thrown to, they take a long time sometimes to cool down because coming from an explosion or from the sun, it takes time to cool down. And then it's caught up in that magnetic um, pull and, and then it starts to rotate. Um, a good example is like when a balloon, if you blow a balloon and you get to a point where the atoms that are made up uh, which make up the rubber of the balloon, when they explode, the pieces will, will fly out to a particular distance and they will stop there. But in terms of a, a body that's in, you know, in space rotating, it will get caught up and then um, it will cool down and then it will start to spin and remain in that orbit around the, the bigger mass. Okay, um, let's move on. Is there a community in central Texas? Um, this is from David James. Um, go on the United Sabians Worldwide.com website, look at contact and look at stores and see the nearest um, store to your location because I can't remember off the top of my head 
um, if there is a community in Central Texas. And um, you can also send us an email and we can forward information to you regarding the nearest community to where you are. Okay, um, are there X points surrounding the Earth? X points. I don't get the question, but um, yes, obviously, I mentioned about the different energy points and centers, and there are many things happening on different um, frequencies because, like I explained, I think I've explained before that um, when you look at something, a physical thing, it also has a energy field. Even like ourselves, we have like an aura and we have different parts of us that are actually vibrating um, on a different density than the physical one. And the, the planet has many points around it where these ley lines connect. And um, if that's what you mean, because the, the question is very vague, are there X points surrounding the Earth? And there are many satellites now that artificial ones are you know, for example, um, people like Elon Musk have launched many satellites now literally surrounding the planet because of his, um, his internet service that he provides and so forth. Okay, let me keep going. This is your friendly neighborhood, Lean Doola. Is that a question or a statement? Uh, okay, thank you. Um, what's your take on Pharaoh being dug up and brought to Europe? for the people to witness his remains as stated in Islam. Yeah, so um, that's from Ma Mav002. Well, there's, a, there's kind of a positive and a negative to this question. The negative is that they desecrate our ancestors, um, for lack of a better word, graves, because they're always digging up our ancestors because those are the only ones they can find. And all these other people they speak about in religion, in Christianity, in Islam, they have no evidence because they don't find their remains. And so in that sense, it's a very disrespectful thing to do. It's like some stranger coming to your parents' grave and just digging them, taking them out just to experiment and put them on display. However, what it has also done is help the world to recognize who was here first and the fact that we were here before other races and from finding you know one person who they may have spoken about as a myth let's say Osiris for example because when we say that Egypt predates the monotheistic religions who they don't have any evidence or they can't find any of the people they talk about and they used to say that the Egyptians were pagans and it's a myth and it's not real. But when they dig up and find them and take the DNA and realize that it's indeed that person, then it proves that the rest of the family also existed. So our ancestors um, kind of left certain um, clues, if you like, so they will find them because they knew that in the future, the science and um, the technology of the future is really DNA because now DNA is able to prove who was here first, um, and, you know, who, who existed first and what they did. And that's now proven without a shadow of a doubt by anthropologists. Okay, Chris Mafolo, um, Rahul Batsakin, I asked a question last week, but unfortunately you couldn't give an answer because of the time. I wanted to know the origin of the people in the Congo region. A um, lot of pygmies live in there. Yeah, I mean, we have a um, we have a scroll called the Proverbs of Yanun, where it gives you a diagram and everything of you know what people are calling the pygmies. The pygmy, the term pygmy is actually an ins an insult for these Pataites, the original um, Neo Neolithic beings in um, what they call Napata or Moro pre-dynastic um, and these beings then migrated in different directions from what people call the Egg Island. Um, I would suggest you get hold of that scroll because it's very detailed in terms of our origins. Um, I got a brother, okay, he's, he's also answering questions in the chat, he may be able to 
fill in the gaps with some of the things that I say because I really want to try and get through as many questions as I can. But yeah, we are the original people from these original Pataites and Patar being the first. And this is where the word al fatiha you can hear Patar, Fatiha in Arabic because it talks about the opening. And you know that's the first surah. Well, the order is completely different now, but um, that was the, the 96, which is now the number one. All right. Um, okay, keep going. What on earth are X points? Yeah, that's what I was trying to work out. X points are portals naturally produced. Okay. Yeah, now it's a bit more clear. When you say portals, yeah, there are vortexes and portals, not just on earth, but in outer space as well, when you deal with what people would term black holes. Um, because when things expand and other things are expanding, you get to a point where the rims touch and they create um, what people will call vortexes or black holes or portals that open up into different dimensions um, and, yeah, different realms. Okay, let's keep going. Because the crafts they came in could only hold 50 beans. Okay, um, let's keep going. Where can I find the book of Christism? Also, which actual facts book should you read first? Um, you know, the master teacher, Parnabab Yanun, Dr. Malachi Ziyuk, has published so many books. And this is why we need your help, because when you support us, we can reproduce and reprint some of the older titles. Because new books are constantly coming out and, you, you know, you have to deal with logistics. And, but yeah, the, the book of Christism, you will have to search online and go on Amazon and Google if you really want it even though, um, you know, some people are charging a lot for it, um, or, you know, you just have to wait if it ever gets reprinted. Um, we've got a live call, so let me just interject to take that. Rahubat, greetings. Um, please say your name and, your, and where you're calling from, and then ask a question. Rahubat. Hi, so my name's Bailey Evans, and I wanted to ask, what are, like, the main things that you need to know yeah. to, like, ascend or to, like, make it, through the um, grateful, no, the great and dreadful day. Because obviously I'm 60 and there's like a lot of stuff to like, there's a lot of information to take in. And I just want to know like, what is the main that? So did you I say you're 16 or 60? 16. Oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So the, the main thing to do is get inside a community in Wusabat. Um, because the, the grooming and the information and the, not everything we speak about publicly, um, or shall I say, we speak about things publicly, but there are things we don't speak about publicly. So the main thing is for you to connect with Parnabab Janun. And when we say that, of course, people are aware that he's incarcerated. And the number one goal for us as Sabians is to do everything we can to have him released, which will be done regardless and very soon. So the reason I say that is because people think that just because he's, his physical body is incarcerated, that they can't have a connection with him. You can, depending on how you raise your vibration, have a connection with him. Um, bro, Kingsley, I don't know if there's something going with the camera, but... Um, just have a look. Yeah, so um, you can connect with him. So I'm saying number one thing is to have a connection with the man himself, Parnabab Yanun. You can do that spiritually. People are d having dreams with him and no one can fake being him in your dreams. You can connect with him spiritually as he's a spiritual guide. He's a being that is 360 um, degrees of what we term the seen world and 360 degrees of what you call the unseen world as a 720 degree being. So that's a spiritual connection. Physically, you need to go to your nearest bookstore, temple, community, and start to be a part of the family because that's where you will get the guidance and the information that you need to, um, to elevate. Meanwhile, 
um, you can read the scrolls and put them into practice. And we have something, well, the main doctrine of this day and time is known as the hereafter doctrine. That's Pataruk, which consists of many Pataraks. We have the actual facts and the master's secret. Unfortunately, there is no shortcut. Like, people want a quick fix solution. You have to do the work because, yes, we come here or I come and I answer questions based on what I've studied, but everyone's supposed to be studying and everyone's supposed to be teaching and helping each other. So the books are your number one source to connect. I have another person on the line. Um, if you would like to say your name, where you're calling from, and then ask your question, please. Greetings. Rahul um, It's Greetings. very nice to hear alternative views on our reality. Um, high spirits to yourself. Likewise. Uh, what, I like to ask, what I like to ask you, um, do you have a telescope and do you ever analyse the stars? I do. Or the space? I actually do indeed, yes. Is, is that a question? Okay, yeah, we do. Because the thing is, like we always teach in Wusaba, you have to research and do, investigate and look at things and study things and research things for yourself. Because most people are actually dumbed down to just constantly looking at their phones or looking down on the ground. They don't really study the stars and the sky and to see, you know, natural phenomena in terms of natural nature. Um, so, yes, it's good to get a, you know, get a telescope, get a good one that you can see things and look out into things, all right? Um, We've got two donations on us, well, there's three. Okay, is that Ayo? Should we do it? Yeah, is it? So this, this one was first. Okay. Appreciate love, the donation from Savant. Um, if Dr. York is biological, bio, biological son of Enki and Damkina, why do you not hold the Anunnaki to a higher regard, why don't you acknowledge them as our evolutionary parents? All right, so the, the thing is, um, when you say our, the word our is very generic because not everybody comes from the same bloodline or the same seed. And yes, some of the Anunnaki mix with us because remember that Enki actually went to Africa and he took wives from Africa and he has offspring, and there are lots of mixtures on the planet. So um, we, we also recognize that when you're talking about the master teacher, Parnabab Danun, over the years he's been teaching us, he has been channeled by many different beings. So during the time he was teaching us the Sumerian doctrine, he was, um, in terms of his spiritual connection, like, like we all have, to parents in that, in that vein would receive information. But what happened is that you have two sides to these beings where you have the agreeable side and you have the disagreeable side. And you have the Nataru who are actually the agreeable side. So when we were teaching the doctrine of the Anunnaki, yes, we a lot of us are related to them, but um, he then completed that Sumerian school and we moved on and back into connecting with our actual most authentic ancestors who would be the Nataru. So it's not that we don't, because um, you can go back and read the holy tablets and read a lot of the scrolls he put out and he was explaining who the Anunnaki were. But you have to remember there's agreeable and disagreeable, like you have different species like the Umshamgao as well as the, you know, and then you have the other side which is the agreeable because the disagreeable side, they're like flesh eaters, and these are some of the characters, Enlil and Enki, that you hear most about in the, the biblical stories of the Bible and the Quran. All right? So, like we say, Yahweh, that would be like Enki. Baal will be um, Enlil, you know. But the words and the names get messed about throughout the different scriptures. Okay, we got uh, Jai Moses. Um, again, I appreciate love your donation. Um, in some of the scrolls, the master talks about the different alternative, and then he talks about the brain team who went to Mars to escape, but won't, won't the disagreeable extraterrestrial know where they are? Um, yeah, I mean, when, when you're talking about the brain team, 
Yeah, the extraterrestrials do know where they are. Um, and the fact is that they, they're not able to escape judgment regardless of where they go because you have ancestors that are the guardians of the galaxy and they're the guardians of portals and you know you can't just go wherever you want this is why sometimes they will encounter other beings and resistance and rocket ships and certain things will get destroyed and you know they will they won't be able to do what they're doing he said um, the disagreeable ones that have received judgment um, that even if they went on the ground because they had something called alternative one two and three that the master teacher taught us about um, alternative one was really to try and um, destroy as much people on the planet as they can because in order to control the planet they have to reduce the population and that has been going on for a very long time that was alternative one but for us being the gods we procreate and re replicate much faster than you know they can destroy us um, and then that didn't work. So alternative two was to try and go into the caverns and live on the ground and build on the ground cities and, and so forth. And again, they encountered many different beings that were there already and they couldn't stay there either. So their last alternative was to get out of it. Hence um, putting things like the brain team together and then trying to get out of it, and that's still ongoing. So each one of these alternatives is still ongoing, meaning that they're still trying to eradicate and, and control the population on the planet. They're still trying to build on the ground, you know, tunnels and cities and malls and things like that to survive the oncoming sun cycle with, where the sun is going to be basically eliminating people on the planet that um, are not able to live here um, so yeah so that's that's still going on okay so they not they, and if they go on the ground water is going to also be able to find those ones that have been judged and are not able to um, escape the judgment all right okay um, um, Rahul Bat, what do you think will happen to the ones this is I so am what will happen to the ones left when the chosen are picked off? Um, it, all, it all depends on what time period, but um, the people that are left behind, if they survive the calamities and the many things that are going to happen, they will be guided to, to safe places and um, await the return of the ones that have been chosen to come back and teach and help help them. Um, okay, I was born on the 1st of the 5th, this is Brandon A, 1st of the 5th in 1985. What is the significance of being born in 85? There was a scroll you had, I don't remember the name of it, was supposed to tell us our power. That's, that's so vague. Um, Brandon, you're going to have to be a bit more specific. Um, yeah, I, I don't remember. I don't know what scroll you're referring to. Um, but yeah, we'll have to come back to that one. Um, what else have we got here? Is Gabriel the angel the same who visited Maria and uh, the prophet Muhammad? Yes, so they say according to their um, their records, um, but we know that these records, their records are not our records, because um, Gabriel is referred to as Jibril in Arabic, and they say that's who visited Muhammad and um, was revealing the the Quran to him in you know in pieces over a long period of time, but we know that. Um, those names are actually copied from the Egyptian stories um, and that would be Geb, yeah, Geb, Ra and El is a concocted word put together. Um, so yeah, in the story of the Adamites, of the monotheistic religions, that's what they say that the angel Gabriel is the same person that visited um, 
Okay, it says, I also noticed you wear, wear the black and gold and the other brother wears blue and gold. <laughs> Um, there's no question there, but I, I mean, I'll answer it if you're asking, is a question, why do we wear black and gold? Well, black is supreme balance. It represents supreme balance and it represents us, the Negroid race, because of the fact that before there was light, it was darkness. And that's dealing with supreme balance and it's dealing with our melanin. Is dealing with the fact that we are we are the beings with the the sun heat genes um, because when people look at the sun they don't realize that it's actually black but it also refers to us as a race as I've mentioned gold um, is a very valuable commodity it represents royalty and the fact that we have gold within us within our blood um, referred to as the elixir of life uh, monatomic gold is referred to in our um, tone as par mafkuzet, mafkuzet, and that deals with the special, the things that make us special. Um, so that's that's gold. But of course, even in this world, they use gold as a commodity and something that's very valuable for for trade, etc. But I don't know. You didn't ask a question. You just said you notice I wear black and gold, and we do wear other colors. We can wear anything we can design and we're creative people we're colorful people we do have other colors so um the black and gold is really us um which helps us to be unique and different and it represents our culture and we are saving souls in black and gold um okay what's next how do you feel, this is pursuing dreams, how do you feel about tribes that are practicing sacrifice rituals or hunting albinos to use their bones as magic portion? Yeah, again, that's, we, we don't do any form of rituals that we sacrifice anything, humans, bones, you know, parts of people's bodies like hair and animals and any of that we, we we don't those those are in um things that have infiltrated and infiltrated our our natural what we call black magic or culture of do you know what i mean like connecting with our ancestors and with natural nature um that a lot of that actually comes from the religious world and from other races that practice um, that, and if you look at the, the Bible and the Quran and these books, their gods request for sacrifices and um, even sometimes if it's a test. But you can read the whole of Leviticus. In fact, not that um, I'm not sponsored by any of these um, labels or things you see. I'm going to mention that there's an online Bible called blueletterbible.org. Um, there's another one, Quran.com where you can just search now, search for a word like blood sacrifices and you see how many times, you know, their gods are requesting for them to do so. Right, we have another live call, Rahubat, which means greetings. Please say your name and um, your location and then ask your question, please. Yeah, Rahubat, my name is Lionel. I'm calling from Zambia, Southern Africa. Greetings. So my question is, is, is there a thing like forgiveness of sin? No, <laughs> because um, when, when you say forgiveness of sin, first of all, we have to define or understand or know what you're calling a sin. Because um, again, that is a religious term, but in the sense of what people are calling a sin is really a person and that person's name is Nana Sin, but we just talk about it as sin. And if you if you align yourself with these being and these beings that influence you to do disagreeable acts, then you are becoming um, you're basically giving that that power to that being, and you can be trapped by that being. And in terms of forgiveness. The master teaches us, um, there's a scroll called um, Breaking the Spell on Blacks, 
and it explains that it's just a delayed reaction or a delayed, um, in terms of the person who is the original perpetrator or committer of the sin will be judged by that sin or by the higher beings like the, the Nataru um, because really depending on what the circumstances of what we're calling sin is and what happened because the reason we say that is because we have both sides and sometimes what people are calling a sin is only something that is disagreeable to somebody else so um, like the gods of the Bible, they will tell you it's a sin to, to, for example, it's a sin to kill, right? But then they're killing throughout the Bible. And it depends on what you mean, because it's very vague to say, thou shalt not kill. And it doesn't say, thou shalt not kill what? But yet people kill animals every day to eat. People kill in situations where they have to defend themselves or, you know, there are certain situations where people will kill and it's not always necessarily what you would maybe consider to be a sin. But really, um, I'm just saying that to show you that it's a very broad thing when people talk about sin um, and it's sin by whose culture and by what laws. And therefore, um, obviously in Wusabat, we have our laws or our commandments and our ethics and our, um, you know, we have things that govern our way, the Pataru, that gives you guidelines of what to do and what not to do. And it's, it's normally based on the right thing to do by not just yourself, but by everyone. Okay, let's uh, keep going. So yeah, that um, pers pursuing dreams, we don't, we don't, we don't support, recognize or, um, have a part to do with these tribes that are practicing sacrifice rituals and things like that. That's, that's not what's about, that's not our culture. Um, why have the wicked been given so much time to do evil if we are in a sun cycle? That's from Purple Royal. The, the answer to that is, is because of us. Because even though we have the master teacher here and has been teaching us since 1970 of what we're supposed to do, giving us instructions, we are not doing what we're supposed to do, which is to come together collectively, unite, and this is based on truth. So anyone who is about truth, about harmony, about order and not chaos, if you're still giving your energies to those beings that deal with chaos and all the wicked things as you mentioned, then you're actually helping them. Just because the sun cycle is here doesn't mean everything is going to happen overnight. People wish that we could just turn on the switch one day and everything is, you know, this is what we ask of the gods of the Bible, of the people that talk about this God that is so powerful and can do everything. The gods that we are are not the magic gods like let there be light, let there be this, and let nothing works like that in creation in real life. Things take time and they they fade or they grow. So we're growing into it. But to answer your question, if more people were subscribing to Wu Sabat and actually implementing and practicing Wu Sabat, it will hurry up. But regardless, they're going to be removed anyway. And the sun cycle came in um, as of the year 2000. We're now in 2024 and you have people that still don't recognize their power or who they are and their abilities to break away from the fear, um, you know, like literally we, we are, to answer your question, we're the one that are keeping it going because it's fading, but um, the quicker we do what we're supposed to do, the quicker this new world of the new sun cycle will come in. Are we supposed to have children? This is from Gangster Twist. Um, we are designed to be able to have children but the thing is, as you know, Wusabat teaches us, we know that in order for you to bring about the best offspring, you have to be groomed and clean yourself inside outwards and be aligned with the right energy so that you're bringing forth supreme beings as these children. And those are the children of the future. So 
it all depends on, on you. We're not supposed to be having beings that are disagreeable beings that are kind of come and create more chaos um, and give us more problems. All right, Rahul Bhatt, Zamal, uh, Zamal Tat, whoever that is on the phone, could you say where you are and, um, yeah, your name? Travis Solon from Belize. Rahul Bhatt, greetings. Go ahead. Hey, I wanted to know, uh, I always hear in the Bible talking about fish. What's the deal about eating fish and stuff like that? Okay. Um, I think the, the deal about that is because we're not really supposed to consume flesh or eat anything that has parents, and that will include fish. However, because for many years, a lot of us were eating fish, um, it's part of a lot of people's DNA, and it's something that will take time to, to wean off. So some people will start off by cutting out red meat, the blood, uh, the blood and the life and spirits are in the blood, and so, People wean themselves off of meat by stopping red meat and then they might go to what they consider to be white meat, which will be like chicken and fish, and then eventually wean themselves off of that completely. We're not, we're not designed to eat meat. There's so many reasons as to why. Um, your body doesn't digest it properly. And even before you put it into your system, nowadays, there are many chemicals that are put into the animals in terms of when they are um, being bred for food and um, your digestive system doesn't really digest it. Um, there are many elements you get from it. You get a lot of uric acid, which causes a lot of high blood pressure, causes di it causes diabetes, it causes um, a lot of ailments. Even, you know, when people um, suffer from dementia, you know, this is linked to, um, you know, eating, eating the, the, the red bloody animals. There are so many benefits to not eating flesh. So that's where most people will say, oh, they eat fish. Um, the master teacher, Pana Babylonun, has taught us that you have two types of main people in terms of diet. You have seafood um, eaters and you have land food eaters. Um, and so... Some people are more inclined to eat seafood, but ultimately we shouldn't be eating any flesh, any dead flesh. Um, animal, um, vegetation, fruits, vegetables, and things like that. People will say, oh, if you say don't eat anything with parents, plants also have parents. Correct, but the thing is that plants are designed for you for nutrition. So everything has a purpose in the ecology and in the cycle of life. So for example, an apple is designed to give you nutrition, right? And its whole purpose, if it makes it in its transition, in its life cycle, is to ripe at the right time and for someone to consume it so that it provides that nutrition to the person. If that apple stayed and got to a point where it rots and it was rotten and it dropped on the floor and it didn't provide that nutrition. It's almost like it hasn't made, you know, it hasn't made the grade in terms of what it was designed for. And it's the same with the vegetation because um, the, the Nataru, our ancestors, create things to evolve. So obviously the, the trees provide, you know, oxygen. We breathe that oxygen. So there's a cycle. And when we our physical body goes back to the ground, to the dust, and you know, like the bacteria then produces life. So everything has a purpose, but we, the, the purpose of animals is not for us to eat, kill them and eat them. I know it might be hard, um, but if you imagine when other beings do that to you in the evolutionary cycle, as in when extraterrestrials abduct humans and eat them, put them in vats, put them in fridges, and then eat them, humans say, oh, what a ter terrible thing. Now, put yourself in the shoes of a chicken or any other animals that you do the same to. You would realize that um, it's, not, it's not something we should be doing. There are so many reasons to that, but obviously I'm giving you the short version. Um, why do some people have an overwhelming feeling to give love, kindness, compassion, etc., and a lot of others do not. 
this is what we're saying about when you're turning yourself inside out because you have, you have many natures because of the mixture over time from different beings. So the, the main natures you have are what we call the Nataru or people say the Natiru or the, the supreme beings that are the most intelligent. They um, are part of your genetics if you come from that bloodline. Then because other extraterrestrials mixed in with us, we also have what we call the animal nature, which is the mammal, or mammal nature that we have. And this is by way of you know, the reptile nature, the reptilians. This is why we have a reptilian brain. But at the same time, we have the two natures. Um, we then have to decide on which nature we take on. So if you eat animals and you eat flesh and you deal with aggression and you deal with um, you, more of your, your mammal and reptilian nature, then you're more aggressive, you're more disagreeable, you're more, um, as you say, not able to have empathy and deal with love, compassion, etc. If you turn yourself inside out and you align yourself with the Parnatharu or the etheric nature, the loving part of you, you then overcome the other side. I explained that earlier on. So when you're more agreeable, more in tune with your Natharu nature, you're going to be more uh, able to share unconditional love. Not just love, because even the word love has been um, desecrated because it's now been associated with lust because these disagreeable entities on the other side, they push for that because you vibrating on that frequency is, is, is good for them. That's what they want. Whereas when we are um, aligned more with our nature on the, on the Nataru, then we are able to um, suppress and overcome the animal nature um, and so on. All right. I hope that's answered that question for you. Um, going through, trying to see what I can catch. Um, where was I? Okay, covered that one. Covered that. Can you please, can you please teach me a little about ancient Egyptian history and then being black or nine ether, does that make them our ancestors? Yes, the thing is that it's the word Egyptian because like everything else, um, People have run ahead of you to try and stop you from connecting with your ancestors, right? So when we use the word Egyptian, we don't realize that that comes from the word Egyptos, which is a Greek word, which was really by the, what people call the Hikachasot, which means the Hyksos dynasty, who basically were in Egypt for a small period of time, and they've used that to basically act like the Egyptians were those Phoenicians and those people that came into Egypt and they got burnt by the sun. That's where the word Aegyptos or Egyptos comes from because it means burnt faces or burnt black or burnt by the sun. And to be burnt meant that you didn't have melanin to protect yourself. So a lot of the times when you're taught about e Egypt, even at school, they go down a particular path. They will teach you about Mark Antony and Cleopatra and certain people and then they've Europeanized those people with the faces because they've actually like turned them into caramelized looking beings with with alkaline features but when you go pre-dynastic i.e before the dynasties to what we're talking about when we say we're ancient Egyptians we're going back to the first and the original beings that inhabited the place known as the Pataites or the, um, what we say, the, the, the Neolithic beings the, in the Nile Valley. That goes way, way back before what most people consider Egypt. And when you go to Egypt today, what you're seeing is really mixed, um, you know, beings that came from way of um, Ishmael, who was the son of Abraham and Hagar, who was uh, obviously an Egyptian. So... Yes, your original ancestors are the Egyptians. If you want to learn more, we have a, a scroll, a book called Ancient Egypt and the Pharaohs and many, many, many um, 
Jesus found in Egypt is a great one as well. So, yes, they are our ancestors. And this is why in religion they teach you, especially Islam, they teach you that having pictures is haram. You shouldn't have pictures because they know that pictures are on the walls of Egypt. And once you connect back to Egypt and look at the beans on the wall, you can look at the features, um, the big lips, the big nose, the big eyes. And this was part of the reason why they started to chop off the noses um, you know, in the structures in ancient Egypt. All right. Um, so I hope that answered the question. We're getting so much um, questions coming through the chat. I'm trying to keep up. All right. If I don't answer your question, just ask it again at the bottom. Remember to subscribe to OSM Vision so you will be alerted. Um, okay. Is Wusa about just like Rasta without Christianity? Not at all. Um, Rasta, if you read, it depends on who, what you're calling Rasta because to be Rasta, it doesn't really say because there are different types of Rasta and um, Wu Sabat is the way. Christianity, uh, again, is religion. Um, Rasta depends on what, you know, what you're calling Rasta because if you go and look, we have a book actually on our website, unitedsabiansworldwide.com called Is Haile Selassie I the Christ? Um, and um, in that book, it goes into a lot of information of, about the origins of Rasta and the fact that um, Haile Selassie I was not who they think he is. Um, he didn't wear dreadlocks. He wasn't from the, the bloodline. I know that people will have their own beliefs, but we deal with the actual facts. So, no, Rasta is nothing. Uh, it's not, Rasta is not um, Christian. Sorry, maybe I misread the question. Um, I heard something about Wu Sabat. I think you said is 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 Wu Sabat Rasta without Christianity. No, Wu Sabat is unique. There's nothing like Wu Sabat because it was prophesied to come at the end and um, to get rid of and dismantle religion and all the falseness on the planet by way of false teachers, false teachings, um, and so there's nothing like Wu Sabat. And put it to the test and you'll see that for yourself. Wusabat will work for you from inside out. All right, let's see if we can get some more. For those, okay. Fish, I think, is the best out of all meat proteins. But if you indulge too much, too many high levels of chemicals. That's important because uh, people that talk about proteins and that um, you need proteins when you stop eating meat. They don't realize the proteins you get from animals is from the vegetation that the animals eat. So, again, it's like you're getting secondhand protein when you can get that protein directly. The biggest animals and mammals, like elephants, and you know, they don't eat their vegetarians, or they don't eat they don't eat flesh, and they don't eat animals. So, in terms of people say you won't build up muscle and you know be big. That's not true. Um, you just have to find out the source of protein that you need, which you can get from many places. But as I said, we are not here to dictate to people what to eat or what not to eat. We give you the actual facts. The master teacher has written books that give you the information and you make up your own mind as to what's best for you, for your health. But um, the best diet is a vegan diet because it's less less acidic, it's more alkaline. Diseases don't thrive in an alkaline state because you're dealing with different vibrations of different energies. And, um, you know, like things that are cold will like to be in the cold. Things that are hot like to be in the hot. Cold things don't like to be in the hot and hot things don't like to be in the cold. So look at that as your body being your temple and um, what you put into it will affect you. Um, I'm from South Africa. My question is on surname. What is the un unique of surname and who introduced it to humankind? It was to keep track of the bloodline. Um, although in ancient times, that question is from Botumal Salike, if I'm pronouncing your name properly. That has, again, it's an infiltration by the religious world to make men over the women. 
So in the biblical and the Quranic um, books, they put the man first. And because they start off saying that God is a man. And then they say God created the first man, Adam, and then took a woman um, took the rib to form woman. And so they give you the whole bloodline of Adam in the Bible all the way down. And you hardly hear of the, the women. Um, but in our culture, the woman is first because she came first. She gave birth to the man. So um, because she holds, excuse me, she holds the mitochondria DNA, which is linked from female to female to female. So the purpose of the surname was really to say, like in the book of Numbers in the Bible, he begot this person and that person begot this person. And that was trying to keep a lineage so you could trace back your family tree. But um, as I said, religion um, glorifies the man. We, as Tamaranes, as Sabians, as Nawapians, we put the woman first, but we rule together. It's not one is better than the other. We realize we need both sides to function at our optimum. So the woman is the goddess that created all others. All right. Um, Yep, some people in the chat. I like, I love, um, again, I said the word love has been desecrated, so evil backwards phonetically um, because they push lust and they push this fake love. But um, real care, real, you know, what we call a shock um, is, is what we're dealing with, unconditional love. And, the, you know, I like the family in the chat that are also helping to answer questions to do with a lot of things that you can find out scientifically um, in terms of, you know, dealing with the digestive system. I see somebody's adding to my build on the whole eating meat. Um, okay, let's keep going. Do you subscribe to the Jakob story and its assertion of how the so-called white race was created? The Jakob story is just one of many, many, many stories um, that we break down. There's a scroll by the master teacher partner Bab Yanun called Shambhala and Agatar that explains that story in so much detail than anyone else has ever done. And that became the Jacob and Esau, Esau story, which the nation of Islam also spoke about in terms of Yaqub, but they didn't go into the details. And when you say the white race, there are different species of what people call the white race, and they're not all the same. And that story was dealing with what um, is known as the Flugorod. And then, you, you know, you have the, the six kings or Vikings where a lot of the species that you're calling white come from. And you have different types. And they're not all genetically the same, all right? So the Adamites are a specific hybrid that was created 6,000 years ago as a, as a food source by way of the Pleiadians who were being eaten by the Draconians and these um, other types of extraterrestrials like known as, you know, the, the reptilians, Draconians. And they, the, the Pleiadians pleaded with them to say, we can create a substitute for you so you don't have to eat us anymore. And that's how these Adamites were created um, or made is a much more appropriate word. That does not apply to all white people. Um, yeah, so it's, it's important to study. Study the scrolls so that you will learn and have the information. We've even put together an online course which you can sign up and that, that is a prerequisite. I would say if you're new to Wutsabat, it's a good way to, to get up to speed, um, get an orientation so that you kind of put things in your mind in the right place and clearly then you continue your studies with the many, many thousands of scrolls um, that we have. And, you know, that helps you to guide you. Because that's the question we get asked a lot of the time. Where shall I start? What book shall I read? And what will help me get everything together quickly? Because you have a, a you know, you have something called going on a long walk on a short path. Meaning that the long walk is the amount of information you have to digest. And what we've done, having walked that path um, before you, is put together something that will help you because we're here to help you. We're here to help humanity. So by 
that amount of information in a short space of time that you have to digest it, that helps you, you know, it's like it helps you put things in perspective and in place. All right, so it's like adding something in what was missing that is found within uh, our dark brown eyes and hair, the more dominant genes. That's from Joshua Jude Williams. Yes, exactly. That shows you the traits of the Negroid or the Nagaru um, in people. So that's why I'm saying it's not as easy as just saying all white people because there are white people, so-called white people, that have brown hair, brown eyes, and that's dealing with the melanin and the genetics because the definition of a white person by when this was actually coined, because that was a part of racism, you know, when Hitler was trying to create the Aryan race or the, what they considered to be the supreme being, they, did, they said that if you have one blood of black blood, you're no longer white, you see. So this white people and black people is a misnomer and it's a thing that creates division and racism, um, which we can go into more detail. I have another live call, so let's... Uh, greetings, Rahul Bhatt. Could you say your name, where you're calling from, and then ask your question? Hello, good evening, sir. How are you? My name is um, Bob, um, and I'm from the UK. Nafir Masot. That means good evening in our language. Go ahead. Okay, that's good. That's good. Um, yeah. So, um, um, I'm a Muslim, and um, you, um, I'm not sure what you guys believe in exactly. Okay. And um, you know, I think I watched your debate with a Muslim guy. Mm -hmm. I think he's from Bangladesh. Yeah. And um. You know, the debate was good, but I feel like um, I can um, have a discussion with you and give you more details about Islam. You What's know, your I question mean, for today? Oh, for today, yeah, obviously, we're not having a debate today. Yeah, I just want to know what, so your your way of life, your, what, what kind of stuff is it? Okay, uh, all right. Your religion, sorry, yeah. First of all, we don't debate. That was not a debate. Um, it was a conversation and a dialogue, and if you say you want to come and have one, you're welcome, as we always say, we, will, we welcome anyone to come and have a conversation. Um, debates are based on two sides and two people trying to compete or fight each other. Um, we, we don't really debate because we don't have anything to prove, and we're not a religion, but we've studied religion because on our path to going back to our ancestors and our way of life, which is known as Wu Sabat, we had to go through these schools of religion, Islam being one of those, one of those schools. And so we know about Islam, we know about its origin, we know when it started, we know how it came about, we studied the books, we studied the language. So really we're just trying to show people, especially those who want to elevate and evolve beyond um, Islam. Now, people are allowed to stay in religion or stay in belief if they want to. But belief is a lesser form of knowing because you can believe something if you don't know it. And so we're not really here to convert people or like debate with, because we did all of that. We actually have a series of books called the debate series where the master teacher, when he was taking us through the school of Islam, and many so-called scholars in the Islamic world came to have debates. And he ended up putting out books like 360 questions to ask the Orthodox Sunni Muslims. And he put out a, a thick book called um, The Degree of Muhammadism. And so that addressed pretty much everything to do with that school. And when we talk about Islam, it's to help people that are our ancestors or our uh, family who are stuck in it to realize that we predate religion and we predate Islam, we predate Christianity, we predate Judaism. In fact, we predate um, most of the races. So yeah, that's, that's what that was about. We were having a conversation and I was explaining to him um, you know, answering questions about Islam. And he was obviously um, giving his perspective on Islam. But if you people that are in Islam and they're like, this is our way of life, which is really for the, for the Arabs, um, if you want to stay in Islam, feel free. 
You know, we, we, we have evolved past that because we know what works for us is Wool Sabat. Wool Sabat is the future. Um, and, you know, religion is, is a dying thing. So we're not trying to say to people, don't believe or don't stay in a religion. It's Wool Sabat is for those who accept facts who, uh, who want to actually like, you know what I mean, grow in their being, in their spiritual being, mentally, et cetera, et cetera. So I hope that's answered that question for you. Um, but yeah, feel free to come and have a conversation or a dialogue if you want about Islam. Uh, right, I'm just trying to catch back up. How much time we've, we literally have about um, just under 20 minutes left about 18 minutes so if we haven't answered your question tune in next week um and um you know ask it again or you know we have classes every saturday live as well uh well not live we have them where you can join live on on zoom and on clubhouse um just go on any of these platforms like clubhouse and search wolf sabat search sabian search noapian search dr malachi z york Search Panda Babianun and um, listen and get involved. Um, okay, hi. Uh, okay, that's been answered. Okay, that's been answered. I see my, a few mods answering questions. That's great. That helps us to get through a lot of the questions that um, you're asking. Um, what else is there? Um, this is Dark Wakening X. Yo, my brother, do you know of beings made of golden light in the void or other realm spectrum? I have had a few experiences with them. I was getting information about how I was older than time itself. Yeah, so this is um, something I was saying at the beginning that when you're dealing with Parnabab Yanun um, and you're dealing with a, a supreme being, there are many beings that are far more intelligent and have elevated more than us, those that have actually elevated to the point where they've shed their physical body and they're now at a different state or vibrational realm as, you know, a pure spiritual being or a, uh, a pure mental being or a pure etheric being. And um, of course, you can be visited by different beings. The, the issue is that Parnabab Yanun is the highest of all those beings and he's able to transcend and be at different realms and deal with. This is why he has so many titles and has been, you know, throughout the different cultures, throughout the different times, he's known by many titles, Michael, Mikael, Murduk, Murdoch, um, Tahuti, you know, they're Parnabab Yanun, and there are many names for the different titles. And you will find this in our scrolls once you start to study. You cannot, you cannot avoid the, the burn and learn process. You have to learn and you have to study. And you have to study the scrolls by Parnabab Yanun, if you can. Um, but yes, he is a being that is here to guide you in terms of the different realms and the different beings. And so you don't get tricked or trapped or taken um, astray by some of these higher beings that will camouflage or appear, they might appear to you to be positive. But you will know because some of them may even be your ancestors that are, are trying to connect with you or, you know, guide you and appear to you. So, um, um, Dark Awakening Exorcist, I just can't find much only religious, but I'm and this is again why Parnabab Yanun set up the, um, the orders, right? Because we have orders where you get groomed and taught other information that's not publicly available. And, um, you know, we have the ancient Egyptian order, which a lot of people have now been accepted into, um, but haven't yet been initiated. Um, and so if you would like to be taught by this being, this intergalactical being that is able to give you all the information you need, you should really get in tune with him, connect with him, and um, and come into come into the family, come into the orders. We have orders for the brothers because 
we reach millions of people. Um, people use this term, the chosen ones. You hear the term like many are called, few are chosen. Um, you know, you, you have to, you have to know if it's something you want to, is it a calling? Is it something in you? Because as, as many as we see the views on our videos and it's at the end of the day, everyone's prerogative and journey, if they want to actually take it seriously and become a part of the, of the orders, you know, be a useful person that wants to be transformed inside out. That's why we do these videos, to find those beings that are, that are ready to do the work, to build, to, you know, we have a lot of work to do, to spread Wu Sabat, to build communities, to bring about peace and harmony, um, you know, and, and get rid of the chaos and the, you know, the problems in the world. So you do that as our ancestors once did. This is why everyone was going into, going to Egypt to be taught, because Egypt was the school, and many will tell you that the civilizers of the world, civilization actually came out of Egypt. And I'm talking about pre-dynastic, ancient Egypt. And so many people went there. This is why Moses went to, was born in Egypt or was you know, found in Egypt. Abraham went to Egypt, Jesus went to Egypt. All your main characters in the biblical stories have a tie to Egypt because Egypt is real. Egypt has documented evidence. The pyramids are still standing. The mummies have been dug up and found. DNA evidence has been taken. Carbon dating has been done. You know, so everybody ties into Egypt because it's real, it's authentic. But when you think of religions and these characters that they call their deities or God, Allah, etc., you can't see them in your mind because they don't exist. But when I say your father or your mother's name, your parents, you can see them because it's a fact, it's reality. And you know that if you exist, that means your parents existed. And if your parents existed, their parents existed, and it goes on and on and on. So one is real, one is confirmed, and one is just stories written by men because you know what language are you talking about how far does that language go who named these names who gave them these names like god allah yahweh somebody named god how is that so who was the person that named god god you know so wusabat dismantles beliefs and wrong information or wrong knowledge and it gives you right knowledge which leads to right understanding and then to right wisdom, which leads you to right, sound, right reasoning, where you're using your, your abilities as a supreme being or as a god or a goddess to make decisions for yourself. Because when they teach you about the story in the Bible, they say that when they ate the fruit, the fruit is symbolic of knowledge. That's another thing, when you're reading these, these books, some information is symbolic, some is allegorical, and some is actual events that took place. And sometimes it gets mixed. So when they say they ate the fruit, that's symbolic of knowledge because they say their eyes were open. But they were walking around in a garden to see the tree of good and evil and to take it and eat it or to see this serpent that Eve was conversing with. So obviously, they're not talking about these eyes, they're talking about your third eye and the ability that that third eye connects to your mind, which then gives you the ability to reason for yourself as a god or goddess. All right, we have another call. We only have nine minutes left. So if you haven't got your questions in, get them in. Rahubat, greetings. And um, please say your name and where you're calling from and then ask your question. Rahubat, this is TBJ and I'm in North Carolina. Um, thank you. I appreciate you. I wish you guys were around more back in the 80s and 90s when I lived in New York. <laughs> we but were I, actually in New York. The headquarters. Well, I, that's where yeah. I used to get my books from. But then I've moved over the years and now I'm down here in, you know, the valley of whatever. <laughs> and there's no way to get any 
working. So well, we are worldwide now. We're online, and um, yeah, you can connect right back in with us. But go ahead, sis. Well, that's how I'm connected now. But you know, being calling and not being there is, is different from just reading. You, you know, we need to be connected like we were to meant to be. To her. exactly. Okay, mm -hmm. so my question to you, because I know time is virtue at the moment. I've followed some things that they said, you know, as people of color, we have 12, um, 12 something as the melaton, different individually making us have a crown like so, like with the stars. So when you speak of the nine ethers, is that the same thing like chakras or something or just to uh, melaton is? All right, let me answer that for you. So, okay. um, Right, so what most people that talk about chakras, they come from really um, the knowledge that was passed off by like Hindus and the Eastern way of life. Um, but as Nagaru or nine ether beings, we actually have nine chakras. And the reason we use nine is because nine is the highest number. And we have the two, the, the extra that we have are above the head. So um, when people say chakras, they're actually really talking about glands. Um, and these glands, like your pituitary glands, your pineal gland, your thyroid gland, uh, these are actual physical glands that you have, um, your solar plexus. And there are many diagrams you can search on Google that actually show you the position of these, these seats, which are actually energy centers that can vibrate based on your um, your state, your mood, your mind, your mental state, and your frequency, your vibration, and the higher your vibration, the more these are able to work for you, and you can actually bring all that energy together. The lowest vibration is the one that deals with a lot of physical desires, lust. Um, you know, the me, myself, and I, 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 I want, I want, and the higher ones which go up to the, the pineal gland, and then as I said, you have two that hover above you, the two that we have as nine ether beings, um, the, the master teacher has taught us about these, and he's going to go, he's going into more and more detail when he teaches us, but all of these play a significant part in you elevating and turning yourself inside out as a supreme being. So yes, those, those, are, those are those seats that make up your energy field that surround you, which people refer to as the aura, because depending on what um, mood or vibration they are at, they give an aura around you. Um, sorry, that is my alarm telling us we've run out of time. We have five minutes left, but yes, sis, um, join us on the classes every Saturday via Clubhouse and on Zoom. Um, and all the links, all the things we talk about. Listen, it's up to you because we're, we are not just here to spoon feed people, right? Meaning that you get out of this what you put in. Meaning that we are providing so many resources, um, links to our websites and to the, the online course, to the, the scrolls, to the books, to the community events. And you have to decide how much of it you want in terms of do you subscribe to the newsletter so we can keep you informed? Do you join us in the classes? Do you read the scrolls? Do you join us and ask questions? Because everybody's journey is unique and it's your journey. And if you want to elevate and learn more and have not to have to come back here and relive this is the lowest vibration and you have to master it to move on. And not everybody's gonna be ready at the same time. And so everyone has a responsibility, you know. It's like if you enrolled in a university or a school, you can choose to just turn up and not do any work. Um, don't do your homework, you know, don't turn up to classes, um, don't take the exam. And you can choose to be studious, do your work, do your homework, sit the exam, pass the exam, move on to higher levels. You know, it's all down to, to you as well. We can, as they say, you can take, I think it's a donkey or a horse or whatever to the stream, but you can't force it to, to drink. So you have to do some work as well. 
This is a real thing. It's not a dip you in water type of religion and then you don't have to do anything and wait for somebody else to come and save you and then wait to go to an unconfirmed place called heaven. Right, this is the final call for today. Um, please state your name, where you're at, and um, please ask your question. Greetings, I'm Hayden. I'm from London. Right, so right. Yeah. My question is, in terms of scientific or experimental work within the kind of Wusabak culture, yeah. is there anything that is being done to rediscover sort of the technology from the beings that visited so that, you know, we can use them for ourselves to better society or what work is being done to look into how these ancient structures like worked and operated? Okay, Tarot Tap for your question, Hayden. Yes, we are those gods that are awakening again. We have that in our DNA and our blueprint. This is why we rebuilt Tamaray, Egypt of the West, because pyramids are not the easiest of things to build and you have to know the, the secrets and the technology behind that. Um, but remember, we have professionals in our organization in every facet of society, from professors to doctors to lawyers to accountants to healers, the best of the best. And the problem is when we follow other people's teachings which are less superior to our knowledge, because everyone would tell you, like I said, the ancient Egyptians, the ancient Tamarians, I have the best knowledge. Most of what is being called technology today is old technology to us. And when you're dealing with our ancestors that fly these crafts, um, like you know, people talk about Nibiru, but there are many, many crafts that are not even using aerodynamics. We have this knowledge, and some of this knowledge can only be reactivated in you once you're touched by the being that knows how to do this. A lot of us have the information in your DNA encoded and I've met many brothers and sisters that are now waking up and are doing tremendous things. We are the future and this is why it's good to start to get rid of these lesser mysteries or this lesser information and learn back to vibrate and use your mind because most people are using less than 10% of their brain. And by getting back your barothry gland, this is part of that to give you back that information that we have within us, but needs to, it needs to be reactivated. And it will only be reactivated by you turning on that key once you've been sparked off by this information known as Wu Sabat. And it's exactly nine o'clock. We're supposed to be doing our chant now for those of us who know what I'm talking about. And it's important because it's about bringing that entropy or that vibration on the planet so that we, this love, this ashok, this positivity, this agreeableness spreads worldwide so we can change the conditions and um, eliminate those disagreeable six ether forces that have had many people, you know, spellbound for so long. All right, we've come to the end. Um, we want to try and keep keep these um, these lives to two hours because you know everyone is used to like snippets, you know, shorts now. And some people say, why why are the videos so long? Because we have to have enough time to get through as many questions as we can. But we do eventually. Because another thing people complain about. You can't win, whatever you do. Why do you chop it up into shorts? Because we have those who have short attention span and you will only get their attention if it's going to be a short video. So we try to keep it um, available to everyone, you know. So, yeah, until next week, tune in. Same channel, same place, same time. Oh, before I go, we now also have a Telegram group because we realize that these conversations can't wait till next week. People have questions constantly every day. So we're gonna, um, we're gonna share the Telegram group. Um, subscribe to OSM Vision, right? Hit the notification um, bell so that you get alerts. Um, share the videos, of course, because everyone has a part to play. Do your part, even if it's just sharing the videos. And so that we, when you join OSM Vision, you get the links to the Telegram groups, to the WhatsApp group, to the information, the newsletters, etc. So that 
you can continue the conversation even when we're offline, right? So the Telegram group is not something new. Um, we'll post the link. And yeah, please. And the Discord, we have, literally, we have all the social medias that we can um, have and we need people to obviously share them. Subscribe. That's one of the ways that you can help us. So until next week, we will say, Wadu Muesar, which means by family, and, um, or by the family of those who are sticky. And we need to be sticky, Yasar. We need to basically come together, all right? Um, much ashuk to everyone who joined us today who asked questions. Um, if you didn't get your question answered, like I said, you can ask it in the Telegram group. You can join next week. You can join us on Saturday for the, the Q&A classes that we do or topic classes. And until next week, Wadu.